Hello, this will be the first episode of a longer series about parametric modeling in FreeCAD. I think it's one of the most powerful features of FreeCAD because you can actually model a lot of things and then simply modify the size, the shape actually, you can modify the shape, the number of features and so on. You can modify almost anything using parameters. So I'll show you the basics, we are just going to build a simple cube with its values, the length, the width and the height written in a spreadsheet. Why am I creating such a simple object? Because I'm going to use it on my CNC, I'm going to use it to flatten faces so I will just change the parameters depending on the piece of wood that I have to flatten and then the job will auto update itself and make everything very fast for any piece of wood that I have to flatten on my CNC. So first of all let's go to the spreadsheet workbench and create the spreadsheet that I'm going to use. It's a simple spreadsheet just like as any other spreadsheet and since I'm going to build a basic body I'll just write here with length and of course height and let's say I'll give it a width of of 200 millimeters, a length of 500 millimeters and a height of 20 millimeters. Now I've created my spreadsheet, I can go back to my drawing and move to the part design workbench. As always, I'll just create a simple body, create a sketch on the XY plane and here I'm going to create a rectangle. I don't really care how I draw it. I select the bottom line and click on L or press the length button, but I usually just use the keyboard shortcuts. And here I can enter a length. Well, I don't want to enter manually the value because I want to be able to change the dimensions without entering the sketch every time and editing these values. So here you can see a small icon. It's the expression icon. You can see when I'm hovering it, it says enter an expression. I can click on it and here I can actually make a reference to the spreadsheet that we've just created. I'll just type spreadsheet and you can see two values here, one without the signs, one with the signs. The one without the signs refers to the internal name of the spreadsheet. In FreeCAD the one with signs refers to the name that I give the spreadsheet in my tree list. I'll just use the internal name and here I have to select the cell that I want to make reference to. Let's say C5. I'm not sure that it is the cell that I for the length it's actually d6 so i'll go back to my constraints you can actually see the constraint didn't save because there was an error so i'll press l again click on this button to enter an expression or i can actually much easier from the keyboard i can press the equal sign pressing the equal sign goes directly to the formula editor to the expression editor so i don't have to take my hands off the keyboard it's much faster so i start typing spreadsheet you can see in the drop down there already just the two values I press on the down key to select the whole name so I don't have to type it and the cell that I want to refer to is d6 I'll just type here d6 you have to take care to enter capitals for cell names because lowercase actually don't work and see if I just type d6 there's an error property d6 not found in spreadsheet I actually can write lowercase and just press the down arrow and it will select from the drop down the d6 value now you can see I have a value in the length field it's 5 it is the value that I entered in my spreadsheet. Now let's do the same for the height. I press I, press on equal sign, just start typing spreadsheet, press on down arrow to select it and it's D5 for the width press enter, press enter again and now my sketch is fully constrained to the dimensions in the spreadsheet. I can now close the sketch and with this sketch I'll make a simple pad. And here I have the length of the pad, default it's 10 millimeters as usual and I can see the expression here too. I can click it but I usually just press equal, again start typing spreadsheet, hit the arrow down and it's D7, the cell that I used to write the length. Now you can see it's 20 millimeters. If I want to just type something here, I won't be able to type. Let me just rotate this back. I just have to enter an expression. If I want to clear the expression and simply type a value, I can click on the formula editor or press equal, click on clear and now I have a simple hard coded value. But I'll go back here again and enter spreadsheet, D7, click on OK. And now this body 
is actually fully parametric. Let's test it. Go to the spreadsheet and give it a width of 700, a length of 200. Well, actually, no, they are switched between them, but it doesn't matter. And a height of 60. If I go back to the 3D view, you can see it changed accordingly. Now I have 700 along the Y axis, 200 along the X axis, and 60 along the Z axis. If you look at the documentation for the spreadsheet, you will see that it's not recommended to insert, delete rows, cut cells, copy cells. Why? Because let's say I want to move these three rows down. I select it, press Ctrl X, and then Ctrl V here. Well, my pad now has an error because there is no longer a D7 value from where you can take the length of the pad. Well, it's kind of annoying because sometimes I just write some values here, then I want to insert another value, I want to have a logic in the way they are ordered. So this is something that I don't like. How can I solve this problem? Let's, let's control Z everything. And there is something I can use to make sure no matter where I copy and paste this, it will always keep the reference correct. I just select the field with a value and here I have a field called Elias. Well, I can give it a name, let's say with, it's pretty easy, press enter twice. You can see the cell is now yellow. This means that I can refer it using D5 or simply width. Let's name the second field to length. Okay, so I also have the second row called length and now let's go back to our sketch, double click on it, double click on the constraint for the length, click on the expression and now I can change this 6 with length. Of course it has to be the same format spreadsheet.length. Now I can click OK, let's do the same for the height, for the width actually. So instead of D5 I'm going to write width, press enter. And now if I go to the spreadsheet again, then take these four cells, press Ctrl X and move them, let's say here, doesn't matter. Press on Ctrl V. I don't have any error. Everything works just as it should. I can still change the values. And my model changed accordingly. Let's do the same for the height too. Now it's highlighted in yellow, this means it has an alias. You can actually look at the, the alias as a variable name. This becomes a variable, it has a name height. Of course I can refer to it, go to the path, go to the length, click on the edit expression or formula button and I can refer to the variable by just invoking the spreadsheet and then the height value. Now I can move all these values around, nothing wrong will happen, all the references will remain and I can order them in any way that I want. I was telling you that I used this kind of um, body for flattening faces on uh, wood pieces. It's pretty obvious, I measure the wood piece, I just, let's say I have a wood piece with 800 millimeters length, a width of 300 millimeters and a height of 50 millimeters and I want to flatten it. Well, by just changing these values, the body changed accordingly and I can now go to the path of workbench and prepare the job so I can mill this piece too. Of course, in the episode on the cam section of my channel, you will see that on the path there are a lot of variables that I can use and write them down in spreadsheets. So I basically just use one spreadsheet and I simply change all the job to flatten any piece of wood in no time. Next time we'll make more than one body with a more complex shape. So thank you for watching and see you next time.